Today, I'm gonna let you see what's in my bucket. <laughs> That's right. I'm gonna walk you through what I use for not only safety, but also design when I want to accomplish the most amazing bucket shot for my newborn clients. So stay tuned. Hi, I'm Michelle Brewster, founder and inventor of the Swaddle Pro and the Profitable Studio. I dedicate so much of my time to helping maternity and newborn photographers just really honestly take charge of their business. I want to bring you the business and marketing tools that you need to not only have a successful session, but have amazing sales. So if you'd like to learn more of my tips and tricks, be sure to subscribe. So here we are with my bucket, and before we dive into what I put inside of it, I want to give you the overall dimensions of this bucket, because that's a question I get all the time whenever I do a video about my props. So this particular bucket, I actually found at a flea market for $8. It's a perfect, perfect find. It is 12 inches in height by the diameter being 12 inches across. So it's a perfect size bucket for a baby. They don't get lost in it. It's not overpowering. The bucket isn't so huge that, you know, the baby is tiny, tiny inside. And it's also not too small so that I can stuff what I need inside of it for safety. So this particular bucket itself is actually a heavier bucket. It's definitely a little bit heavier than you would find at Home Depot or anything like that. But even if you're looking and you find something at Home Depot that's not as heavy, what I'm going to show you next will help with that. So in any of my bucket shots, safety is my number one factor. So I keep some weight plates on hand. I always keep a five pound plate and a two and a half pound plate so that if I have you know, a normal size baby anywhere between six to seven, eight pounds, I'll use my five pound weight alone. Or if I have a larger baby, then I'll just add the two of them together for that extra weight inside. So I don't have to worry about the baby toppling forward when they're doing the hands on the chin, the chin on the hands pose, or pushing backwards if they're laying back for some of their pictures. Safety is always your number one factor in any posing when it comes to babies in general, but of course with the bucket shot as well. So these go directly inside my bucket and it really truly secures it down and I don't have to worry about it toppling over. From there, I like to use the Freeform. This is by Modest Little Me. It is a fantastic tool that makes my life so much easier. I am all about investing in props and posing items that are gonna help me not only get through my newborn sessions faster, but keep the baby settled and help them posed easily and just safely, honestly, because otherwise they'd be on a harder surface or I'd just be rolling up some type of fabric in here that could come loose as they move or anything. So this freeform is fantastic because it's very soft and cushiony, but it also has this wonderful feature with a bendable metal inside of it. So you can mold it to any prop that you want, which is huge. So I invested in the waterproof cover that goes over it. Most of the time, my babies are not naked when they're in a bucket, but obviously we want to make sure that all of our props are cleaned properly. And this is super easy to put into the laundry to wash and make sure that it's ready for the next baby. So I like to put my waterproof case over the freeform. And then it also comes with this wonderful heavy poser. It has got some nice weight to it as well. So it'll also add to the safety of the bucket, but it helps boost the baby up to the height that you need to accomplish the chin on the hands and have it look great. So I'm gonna set this up, give you a little sneak peek, and then talk a little bit about what I use for my fillers on top of this to create beautiful pictures. So to start, this bucket, even putting in this poser, isn't going to have enough height inside of it to get the baby up into where I need them to be successfully to accomplish this pose. So I always keep on hand extra fabric that I can use inside of my props to boost the babies up. This particular height, the 12 inch height, you'll need to add a little bit extra in order to get them into the correct position for the pose. So I use just simple extra pieces of fabric. If you have face cloths laying around, if you have cloth diapers, anything like that really will work. Even if you just have a simple little wrap that you want to stick down in there for some extra height, perfect. So I'm going to add in my fabric first. 
get it down in the bottom, fill it up a little bit. Then I'm going to add in the poser that comes with the free form. From here, I'm going to take my free form, put it inside. Where are we? Here we go. And mold it over the top of the bucket so that it curls over and creates that nice soft padding for the baby to be on. So all I need to do is just bend the metal pieces and mold it around my bucket. Just like so. So it anchors on there really well so you don't have to worry about it then slipping down into the prop and the baby not being able to safely and easily kind of come over the top of the bucket because they're falling down inside the, the bucket itself. So from here, this is where I get to use all of my fun layers to create beautiful end result. So I like to use a couple of different things within my bucket itself. I love to use furs. I love combining really materials that are opposite from each other. So you've got this hard metal bucket, but then you have soft, gorgeous, natural textures with it. So it really creates this contrast that's beautiful for pictures. So furs work really great. Simply just throw it in. You only need a little bit that comes up over. It's a beautiful way to still have most of the bucket showing for all that metal texture and then have the fur on the top. So that's one great way, an item to combine. Or I also a lot of the times will use these chunky knit layers. These are really great for pictures too because of the different texture and the weaving pattern and everything in it. I'm going to pop in a link in the description below to all of these props so that if you want to purchase any of them yourself, you can just go right to the exact prop store to be able to do so. So I can just simply put it in here. With these, I like to kind of have a point come down in the middle, scrunch it up, and look at how awesome that looks. I'm a big advocate for neutral tones because I know that at least where my clients are here in New Hampshire, a lot of their color palettes for their home are neutral. So if I choose neutral designs for my scenes, I know that it's gonna be able to go in any room of their home and not clash. I'm always designing for their home and have a purpose of where it's gonna even go in their home so that I know that I can get the sale. So now I'm gonna show you a little posing tip that I do with the stand-in baby so that you can see how I would normally pose a baby who is naked or of course in a diaper. I usually keep babies in a diaper so they don't get everything nasty inside there. But you can also use my other product, the Swaddle Pro, to keep them wrapped up and just expose their arms. If you're moving from a wrapped pose first into a bucket shot, you can accomplish this very quickly and easily with the Swaddle Pro as well. So first I'm gonna show you here with this stand-in baby, the way that I position the baby and get them comfortable into the pose and then transfer them into the bucket. So for this particular one, I first get babies into the upright burping position. So this is a position you would normally do with a baby just to get a good burp out of them. So I grab simply underneath the chin and around the cheeks so that I can hold their head and control their neck safely. From there, I like to get them settled for a second. Babies typically love being in this pose, this kind of position. It helps ease up any bubbles that they might have and burps and all that kind of stuff. So I get them in first, bounce them a little bit, and then I like to get at least one hand posed underneath their chin before I put them in the bucket. So I will simply, as they're relaxing, grab a hand and put it over and safely underneath. So while I'm still holding onto their cheeks, I just simply get a hand and go right underneath. I never let go of their head ever to be able to get their arm underneath because their safety is my utmost important factor out of any pose that I ever do. So now that I've got them here, the next thing that I like to do is to get their legs into the correct and comfortable position to be able to get down into this bucket. So I like to actually put their legs in the same position that I do the tushy up pose. So I crisscross their legs and then hold their legs together as I put them in. So I'm gonna turn sideways so that you can see this. So 
What I do is I move them forward and bring their legs back and I just take one leg over the other and crisscross exactly as if they were going in that tushy up pose, okay? So I've got both legs. I can usually hold them just like this. They've got their diaper on or they're already in the Swaddle Pro already in this position. And then I transfer over, slip them down in. They've got all of that extra fabric and height inside of there so that they're gonna just very comfortably be able to lie on this soft part. And they're already like, this is a gorgeous pose already. Sometimes it's really cute to just keep one arm cascading over like that. Or if you wanna bo get both arms up, you simply hold their he head and neck safely and slip in the other hand right underneath the other one. Now, in this particular video, I have my light set up here behind me. This is my studio strobe. So when you're lighting this pose, you wanna make sure that if the baby's head is tilted to one side or the other, that its head is always tilted towards the light. You never want the light to shine up their nose. So for example, if I am posing like this, the light is going straight up their nose and that is not a natural lighting scenario. You would never normally see the sun shining up somebody's face because obviously it's up in the sky. So you ultimately wanna tip the baby's head to be in the position where the top of their head is aimed at the light. So the light shines down their face. That is going to give you natural lighting that you would normally see every day because of course, again, sun is above us. Always think the sun shining downwards. So this is a beautiful lighting position to be able to have for your final photograph. Now, when it comes to safety, we've talked about what's in the bucket, but we also want to talk about holding the baby safely, having an assistant, or using a parent as a spotter. You always want to make sure that there is somebody there to assist the baby. Now, normally, if I have the light on this side, I'm gonna have my assistant or the parent on the opposite side of the light so that when my strobe fires, it's not creating a shadow. So I'm gonna switch over to this other side quickly. And in this scenario, if the baby is in there really secure, what I would normally do is have the parent's hand above and they would pull back and shot back and forth for the pictures. Otherwise, if you are not comfortable, if you feel like this is still a new pose to you and you feel like the baby isn't secure in there, then you should be doing this as a composite. It's a very simple thing that you can achieve by having the parent or your assistant hold the top of their head first for a shot, then switch hands and hold underneath their chin for a shot. Cut it in half on the computer and just stick it back together. Now, if you feel like your editing skills are not good enough to be able to accomplish these types of poses, then you need to check out my other video where I show editing and composites specifically. And another tip is to actually just hire somebody. There are a ton of people out there who do editing work that can do that for you so that you can get this gorgeous shot in your portfolio and you can show this to potential clients. I hope you liked this video. I hope it gave you enough information to be able to accomplish this safely in your own photography business. And if you'd like some more information, you can definitely visit my website, theprofitablestudio.com to learn about all the assets that I have available for maternity and newborn photographers. If you enjoyed this video and you want more, if you're ready to finally take charge of your maternity and newborn photography business to reach your financial goals, be sure to check out my website, theprofitablestudio.com. All you need to do is click on the training tab and you'll see a full list of all the trainings that are available from my 12 week online course to my one-on-one -on -one personal mentorships and so much more.